Mortal Kombat 1 is here, and we're continuing our series of ranking videos covering this new game release. It's been a while since we've covered these, but we're finally ranking some fatalities again. We're going to be ranking all 46 of the main rosters' fatalities from the worst to the best. Good morning, afternoon, and evening everyone. Nick here, and welcome to or welcome back to the channel. Man, it's been a while since I got a new ranking out, and I'm sorry for the late post. Better late than never, I suppose. Also, sorry if I sound off. Allergies are really kicking my ass right now, and it's really messing with my sinuses. But, wow, I swear, every Mortal Kombat game really knows how to ante up from the last one. If you thought MK11 had some cringe-inducing fatalities, you ain't seen nothing yet. Mortal Kombat 1's fatalities perfectly highlight character elements, all taking advantage of the next-gen technology, except for the Switch users. Viewers are treated with some of the most highly detailed and goriest kills we've ever seen in gaming. With 23 main roster characters to look at, don't worry, cameos are getting their own list, we're ranking all 46 of the fatalities from the worst to the best. These are ranked based on the gore factor, innovations it makes while succeeding, the fit to the character, along with the pacing and presentation. First things first, I don't think any of these fatalities are bad. At lowest, I'd score these like a 7 out of 10. I just wanted to get that out of the way before someone would throw Serena daggers and hit me four times. With that, let's finish them. Sorry, Reptile, you were the real one. As we rank all 46 of the fatalities from the worst to the best. I'm sorry, but Kung's Loud and Clear takes the bottom spot. It feels too similar to his previous fatalities with not too much innovation. Honestly, just feeling like an updated version of his MK9 one. Sure, it's gross and painful looking, but I was hoping for something a little bit different. But I can't appreciate the fun camera angles and slices. It's not bad, though. Following Kung Lao at 45 is Raiden's The Storm's Arrival. Sure, this one shot super well, but the pacing and overkill, well, kinda kill it for me. This was honestly paced better in the gameplay reveal trailer, but in the final game, it kinda drags on in the end. Overall, it is still a fun and flashy one coming from Raiden. The Cleric of Chaos makes his return at 44, and his first finisher is well, pretty underwhelming if you ask me. It's unique his leg bone and his arm bones actually stab and eviscerate the opponent with a cool camera angle, but it kinda happens a little too fast to tell what's happening or to stand out quite a bit. It's not bad, but it kinda lacks the guts. At 43 with General Shao, and, like the character in the new era, his fatality is also demoted too. The camera angles and pacing is nice, but it's a pretty basic finisher. A slice down the middle that we've seen plenty of times and honestly done much better. Gotta admit, the angles do sell it a ton, but I was expecting more from the general. Subby Wubby's Brain Freeze slams into 42. If it weren't for the ice elements and creative shots, this could have been one of the lowest fatalities and most universal ones in the entire game. But having the wall made of ice does sell the damage the face slams are causing to the opponent. Still pretty mediocre overall, could have iced things up a bit. Probably the most popular female fighter of Mortal Kombat sadly has a basic finisher. Kilopractic adjustment is just a decapitation fatality. I do like the twisting of the head, which is pretty effective at making it stand out, but many others could have pulled this off. Maybe Tanya or even Baraka. Still good, but unlike the head, it doesn't really pop off all for me. Kinda disappointing from the Zatoichi inspired badass, Kenshi. I will say Blended does start off amazing, contorting them and then having them swallow a spinning blade, but the second half of this finisher falls flatter than day old soda. Yes, I am a Michigander that calls it soda. If it had a different ending, say if he pulled the blade forward after it was in their mouth, splitting them in half, it could have been bumped up a few more placements. Overall, not bad. The long-awaited return of Ashra brings her a pretty okay fatality with Heavenly Light. The opening is pretty one wing and angel epic, growing some wings and shooting a bunch of spikes at the opponent, pinning them into the ground. Like Kenshi's, it ends kinda weak with a hot beam just melting them. Like Kenshi's, if the ending were changed, it would have ascended higher on this list. Speaking of long-awaited returns, Natara's break check swoops in at 38. Like some fatalities in this game, I feel this could have gone a different route to be stronger. 
Grabbing an intestine and flying them up into the air is already gross enough, but kicking them so hard their skeleton flies out of their skin is kinda Looney Tunesy, but not in the best way. If she had managed to spin them around like a shot put or discus and then spike them into the ground, it would have jumped up quite a bit. Still alright overall though. Water bending, quite literally, at 37 with reins under pressure. Of the few consorting fatalities in this game, this one's okay. He summons water to lift them in the air and then bend them around, breaking them like a Kit Kat bar. I do think the end is a little weak by just popping off the head and then stomping on it. It's something that we've seen a few times before. It just didn't really hit in the end for me. Overall, it's still pretty alright. Looking at the next Mortal Kombat character I plan on cosplaying, Reptile. Acid Reflux is another cool take on remaking his classic, iconic Tongue Lash fatality from Mortal Kombat 2. The nice twist is the opponent trying to break free, but their hands melt away after grabbing their tongue. It's simple and effective, lashing out many of the other finishers we've seen so far. Raiden's second fatality improves over his first. Ride the Lightning sees Raiden pull out his lightning amulet and electrocutes the opponent. It's a good revamp of shocking the opponent's style of fatality, advancing it by flaking away the skin all the way down to the bone. It wraps up with the Raiden staple, the Superman fly breaking them apart. A bit nitpicky, but I do wish it included the Raiden gibberish like Johnny Bought a Car or something like that. Overall, still pretty good and electrifying. The movie star of Mortal Kombat, Johnny Cage takes his opponent down the Hollywood Walk of Pain at number 34. Johnny takes him on a short walk, hyping them up as a new star, which is actually code for replacing their Hollywood star with the opponent's face after he slams it into the ground. The peeling back sound is gross, fun fact, which is just a bunch of fruits and veggies, and then takes a selfie with their not face. A fun little point here is that each face changes every time he does the fatality. I've heard many state that it's too similar to Cassie's from Mortal Kombat X, but Johnny does enough to make it feel like it's his own. Pretty good and grody overall, a starstruck fatality. Hey, we've got another classic fatality reimagined with Baraka's Split Decision. This borrows similar beats to the MK2 stab lift, albeit a little bit more brutal than ever. Instead of lifting and having them slide down the blades, Baraka shoots the blades through their eyes and then pulls back peeling them like a banana. It's pretty gross and a great way to innovate the classic finisher from his first appearance. Looking at the traitor turned Umgadi of MK1, Tanya at 32. With her three section staff, she makes for quite a cringy head rip, hitting the head to spin it like a drunk jock in Freddy vs. Jason to then shove the staff down the throat is already kinda gross, ending it by pulling out uh, the staff with a few helping hands, yeeting the head and spine away. Pretty gross, but an innovative way to do a head rip. Looking at our not-so-delightfully-devilish Ashra again with threads of ill will. This fatality I imagine as if Wonder Woman were a killer. She strikes them several times with a weird lasso ability on each part where she struck, but still connected to her blade. She then pulls the body and every strike where she hit breaks apart. It's shot super nicely and it's pretty unique overall. So, whip it good, Ashra. Flying in at 30 with Natara's Viternius Combat. Hey, they made the joke for me. A pretty unique way to utilize bats or some living creature in a fatality. Forcing a bunch of bats to fly into the opponent's mouth and then flutter inside of them is pretty dark, as you can see their stomach bubbling. Though the ending of ripping the front half of their body is gross, I wish the bats broke out of them instead after Nataro did some weird scream to have them come out. Yeah, it's a bit nitpicky, but this one's pretty good overall. It's pretty bat ass. Sorry, I needed to make a bat pun too. Hey, time to look at the Scream Queen of Mortal Kombat, Sindel at 29. Talk about a new way to innovate her screaming fatalities with Livin' the Scream. This is a nice fusion of the MK9 and MK3 scream fatalities, screaming so hard the opponent's ears burst with blood, really hits home for me, and then the eyes pop out of socket. You would think it would be done, but and then she ends up screaming one last time, cratering them into the ground with nothing but their skeleton left behind. Quite a unique one with some deafening impact. Taking a second look at one of my favorite readaptations in this new era, Smoke. His second fatality is a nice twist on the hidden assassination trope, or even a tribute back to his deceptive cyber days. Up in Smoke sees him shrouding the arena in smoke, followed by slashing the arm clean off, then their legs and then seeing them confused after each strike is just effective. I also love the slice across their head and then knocking it off with the knee. 
I also love the framing of it with the top half of the head at the end, and then it's overlooking where Smoke and the cameo are. This one is just a fun twist on a classic ninja staple. Any way you slice it, this one gets the job done. Speaking of slices, we're taking a second look at Kung Lao with Slapped Together at 27. His second fatality is another great innovative way to split the opponent in two with his hat. Tossing the hat straight up, flipping over the opponent, and hyperextending their arms is just brutal, and a way to showcase that they can't get out of this one. And then the hat falls back on them, slicing down them really good, and then he pulls them apart and then slams them together. Pretty grody and nice. Hats off to you, Kung Lao. Taking another revisit to another character, Havoc. Number 26's Atomic Heart is appropriately describing what he does. Ripping open his own chest, ripping out his own heart to swap it with the opponent's is already kinda gross, but his moldy and infected heart starts acting up inside of their chest. He crushes the opponent's heart, which somehow causes their body to explode in a gross way. It's pretty unique and something we don't see too often in the Mortal Kombat series. Though this character is quite the savage, but he at least has a heart-to-heart -heart moment when it comes to his executions. Wrapping up the general of Outworld with Spin Cycle at 25. Outside of Johnny Cage's finishers, this is one of the more outlandish and funnier fatalities. Taking them airborne and then spinning them around so fast, their skin peels away until the skeleton is just left behind. After that, Shao spikes them into the ground, shattering all of the remains. It's weird, but memorable for just that reason. Taking a second look at Smoke with Hazed and Confused at 24. As I mentioned in the Evolution of Fatality shorts, this is a kinda sorta remake of his wacky grenade fatality in Mortal Kombat 3, but updated in a much better way. Additions like slicing off their arms while utilizing the smoke grenades and his new dagger. The cringy part is stabbing open their mouth and then shoving the grenade in their mouth and then seeing it explode is just extremely gross. The opponent being in shock as their jaw is missing until they fall over and bleed out. Quite innovative from a presentation standpoint. Like the opponent, this finisher is just jaw-dropping. At 23, we're looking at the character most requested to return since MKX, Lee Mei. With her huge readaptation from the original timeline, she now has some crazy magical abilities with Grand Finale. Her fingers glow and she blows off their arms, and then transfers energy into their chest. With it growing pink, this causes a massive explosion with a beast catching their head which I found to be a little fun and cute little detail. I'm happy this character made her return. It was long overdue, and it made up for some explosive fatalities. Appearing at number 22 from the Sands of Time is the artificial construct, Giris. Sandstorm, not only is it an awesome song by Darud, but it's also a pretty cool fatality. Having the opponent create a sandstorm while they're inside the eye of it, and then Gira shoves the opponent's body into the sand, which is crazy cool. I honestly love the shot and framing of this one. It really reminds me of the Sandman fight from Spider-Man 3 by Sam Raimi. It's also a nice detail to show how much the sand ripped apart their body when he makes the sandstorm end. After you think it's over, he spikes them into the ground. That little leg twitch at the end always gets me. Quite the fun fatality from Giris. Number 21 with the revamped Tanya with Show of Hands. Her hands hoist up the opponent into the air, grabbing each of their limbs. She turns her three-section staff into a pole and treats it like a javelin, throwing it into their mouth and splitting them in half. This fatality is simple and quick, but extremely memorable and pretty funny. I got a solid laugh out of it. On top of it, the camera angles really sell how funny this one is. And just like the name of the finisher, this also gets a show of hands. Cracking into the top 20 with Ed Boon's favorite character, Scorpion. Eye Pauling Victory is a new fun way to utilize his rope spears, knocking them airborne with a fire blast, then throwing the spears to pierce through their stomach and then loop around into the back of their head is something innovative and new. Yanking off their head and then having it come here and break the body in half catching it with a nice camera angle. A fun new take with his rope spear for an awesome fatality. Ed Boon did his boy some justice.
Wow, only four placements later and we're already looking at Lee Mei again with Roman Candle. Continuing the trend of explosions, but with a different twist. Reaching into your guts and igniting the small intestine like a wick of a dynamite is something creative and new. I also love the opponent's reaction as the wick reaches closer to their body. Before it catches up to them, she surprises them with a flip kick, popping off their head and then it explodes like a firework. Yeah, it's super fun and gross at the same time. Like their head, it's an absolute blast. Finally taking a look at the snake turned snake oil salesman of Mortal Kombat, Shang Tsung. With this baddie more of an alchemist than a sorcerer, along with being armed with some cool Vega claws, he puts those to use. Stabbing your neck and forcing you to drink some gross liquid, then slicing your neck open is already a disgusting start. Ending it by eviscerating the opponent with lava bursting out of their gut and neck while burning them alive is a gross way to wrap it all up. I love how it wraps up with the opponent just sinking into the lava and watching their body just melt away. Even in this new timeline, Shang is still sharp when it comes to his fatalities. Fatality. Here comes trouble at number 17 with Sindel. Yet another great innovation of using her hair as a weapon breaking off their arms in a very painful looking way, and then pulling them in closer by inserting her hair into her arm sockets is just absolutely nasty, like what the hell Sindel? I do love how she taunts them by asking, who's your queen, and then proceeding to rip their head and spine from their neck. All gross and fitting to the character, full of gore and sass. Your queen. Fatality. <laughs> Sindel wins. Wrapping up Kwai Liang's turn as Scorpion at 16 with killer clones from Netherrealm. Not only is that an amazing name for a fatality, it's also a great way for Scorpion to totally redeem yourself from his terrible Mortal Kombat 3 fatality I ranked so long ago. This time, you actually see the clones inflict some damage with a sword stab, axe swing, and a little toasty reference. Just when you think it's over, he pulls them in and then kicks them so hard, their skeleton pops out and causes the craziest degloving finisher thus far. It's a bit excessive and extreme, but it's just really fun to watch. Way to redeem a panned finisher from the previous timeline, Scorpion. Lizard dashing into the 15th spot is Sizoth with Indigestion, which is an amazing remake of his Hidden Chomp fatality, which is something I pointed out in my Reptile Reaction video. Instead of just disappearing and then watching the body get bisected, he rushes at them, vanishes, and then swallows them from behind. He spits out the top half of their body and slams their head treating it like Billy Corgan's band. The little details of them crawling away and their arm bursting are just nice. It's about time they've updated another forgettable and panned finisher from MK's past and made it one of the best in the entire game, dare I say, one of Reptile's best fatalities. Kudos to the MK team for totally redeeming Reptile. We are not done looking at the blind swordsman. Hands down, this is one of Kenshi's best fatalities. Gyro Nope sees him throwing the sword into their chest and, with his telekinetic powers, moves the blade around slicing them apart. I love how he ends it by stabbing their crown and then watching their entire body break apart, specifically at each part that he had sliced. Really looks like someone's a big fan of Metal Gear Rising with this one. And just like Raiden, Kenshi cuts at will and lets it rip. <laughs> Fate. 
Fatality. Number 13 with the Water Mage, Rain. His second fatality, the Red Sea, or in this case, Green Sea, sees him put the opponent in a water cyclone. Apparently the current is so strong when he spins it, their skin starts peeling away and it makes the water cyclone resemble either Diet Mountain Dew or Hawaiian Punch. After splitting the Red Green Sea, so too is the opponent. It's innovative and fun, making use of more Rain abilities. It's just a splashy good time. It's about time we've seen the Kiss of Death come back in Mortal Kombat 1, and Katana delivers it in a unique way with Minty Fresh. She kisses you, and instead of inflating or contorting like before, your body slowly starts to decay. It's extremely nasty if you don't like body horror, and I do like how it mixes some classic elements from other Kisses of Death, such as Sonya's vomiting from Deadly Alliance, but adds some new stuff, as I mentioned, like the decaying. The final part that really gets me is where he tries to hold himself back up, and then the arm just breaks. That always just grosses me out. Another unique spin on an old classic. Scrolling along with the Lin Kuei Ninja, Sub-Zero. I'm guessing Bihan is quite the anime fan as he recreates Tessai's demise down to a T, camera angles and all, with hairline fracture. Throwing an ice blade to bisect them, kicking them around and then having the blade boomerang back and stab their face. As they slide down, their head splits in two, which is a nice little crazy detail. It's also really crazy and cool to see the Mortal Kombat team pay tribute to an awesome anime for this hairline fracture of a fatality. Making our way into the top 10 with the Royal Katana with Royal Blender. As of now, this is probably my favorite Katana fatality to date for how simple, effective, and brutal it is. Using the fans as blenders to lift the opponent and then slowly have the fans go closer together, shredding the opponent and leaving nothing but some meaty bits behind. I love the effective use of camera angles and the pacing. It's over with quickly and it doesn't overstay its welcome. Guess you could say I'm a big fan of this one. Our Hollywood icon crash and burns into number 9. The team always comes up with a unique way to implement Johnny's weird elements, and MK1 continues that trend with his car. Kicking the opponent into the driver's seat, opening the door, and then slamming to bisect them with an intestine stuck between the door. He auto starts it with a toasty, it rockets off with them still attached, and crashes onto the other side of the arena. Of all the body go boom fatalities in this game, this has to be my absolute favorite. One little fun detail is the music that plays when the door opens will change between classic Mortal Kombat tunes. Overall, this fatality drifts right into the top 10. After all this time, we're finally looking at the revamped Reiko. The Impaler is quite a unique weapon-based fatality. It's similar to the Jades from Mortal Kombat 11, but loads better if you ask me. Slicing the arms and legs off and then stabbing directly into their chest and pinning the spear into the ground as they slowly slide down the spear. Instead of being all patient, I guess he's in a hurry because he grabs and yanks them down it, having the tip of the spear pop through their mouth and their ribs break through the body. It's absolutely gross and disgusting but quite fitting for the right-hand man of General Shao. Oh, and trust me, if you want to see a more disturbing finisher, just wait and see. You won't be disappointed. Fatality. 
number 7 with the Royal Adenian with a killer appetite, Melina. Of the ways she's eaten her enemies in the past, this has to be one of my favorites. For god's sake, she slashes you in the stomach having you do a 180, quickly stabs into your collarbones pushing you to your knees, and then eating the top of your head. She starts by eating the top of your head and then slurping the brain, capping off by chomping one more time leaving nothing but the lower jaw left. Probably the most disturbing detail is when she slurps the brain, you can see the eyes get scooped with it. It's very disgusting and it's just another gross nuance showing how detailed these fatalities have gotten over the years. It just comes to show how some of the most simple fatalities can come off as the most effective as well. Guess you could say just a little food for thought there. The champion of Mortal Kombat turned the Keeper of Time, Liu Kang steps in with Double Dragon. Once we saw this in the announcement trailer, I couldn't wait to see this in game, and it delivers. Having two dragons hoist up the opponent and Liu Kang splits them in half by chopping down their head as it keeps screaming until it crushes against the floor of the stage. It's just absolutely amazing. One of my favorite little details is when he punches them in the face to start it, the blood actually hits the camera, which is just a little fun and cute little thing I noticed. All of this is paced perfectly, it's shot extremely well, and the angles are great, and it feels like something only Liu Kang could perform. Like the dragons, this one just gets me all fired up. Carving and serving up at number 5 is the top tier monster, until the recent patch notes, Baraka. His second fatality, the 4 piece combo, is a unique crazy one. Starting with an evisceration, sending you airborne, and then hoisting you up by holding your intestine is already pretty gross. Okay seriously, what's with the intestinal abuse in this game? Then a group of tar cottons pull the 4 horse torture method and rip off the victim's limbs. Afterwards, the entire group of tar cottons and Baraka chow down and enjoy some food. Dinner is served with this one. Slithering in at number 4 is Shang Tsung with Feeding Time. Another weird one involving two summons, first being the surgeon's table that he slams and eviscerates the opponent onto, and the second being a weird summon. He pours another potion into their cut, and then a snake resembling the Mortal Kombat dragon treats their face like an all-you-can-eat buffet and starts chowing down. The brain munching at the end is the gross cherry on top and always makes me cringe. It's effective at getting the job done, and it's another crazy innovative fatality. It's it's a great innovative way to implement the alchemist archetype into a fatality. Also, I'm not really sure if insurance is going to cover this one, but it's still an effective fatality. Earning the bronze medal is Reiko's Pinned Down. Heads up, probably one of the more uncomfortable ones not involving supernatural elements, but dear god is this one just disturbing. He rips your hands off, shoving the arm bones into your neck, then twists the top half of your body around, bending it over, reaching it to your stomach, and then pulls a sub-zero staple by ripping out the spine and skull out of your body. The way the body contorts and just gets mutilated is gross and disturbing. It's hard to watch this one with a straight face. The tiny detail at the very end is the head deflating as it's missing its skull. It's a unique detail, but it's also just gross. Of all of the barehanded finishers, this one takes the cake for being the most brutal, hands down, as they were ripped off and thrown onto the floor that is. Our runner-up goes to the Keeper of Time, Liu Kang. 
Yet we have another crazy innovative finisher with spaghettification. No, I did not make that name up by the way, but it is a great way to describe what happens to the opponent. Teleporting them both into space, he summons a giant black hole with a Thanos snap and then holds them over it as it sucks them in. The opponent slowly getting skinned alive until nothing is left. Seeing the opponent slowly wither away is just absolutely nasty and another great way to highlight the gore innovations in the series. Like the black hole, this finisher pulls all these amazing elements together and makes for one of the series' best fatalities. Fatality. Liu Kang wins. Flawless victory. Rightfully deserving the number one spot comes from the temporal fighter, Geras. Of all the fatalities we've seen over the past 30 years, temporal execution is probably one of the most innovative ones we've ever seen. I mean, by the Elder Gods, he reaches into the future to rip the opponent's head off and then smacks their face, which is already pretty hardcore. After handing their head to the opponent, they look at it and notice it resembles the same injury they just suffered, as it's missing the jaw. With their confusion, the time portal opens back up and Geras rips their head off, literally going full circle with his fatality. Rarely do we ever get to see any time-based fatalities in anything, and this is such a unique way to do it. And it's awesome that we have a time-based character who can pull this off. For its uniqueness, the fit to the character, and innovation, this is what makes Temporal Execution take the top spot as the best Mortal Kombat 1 fatality. Guess you could say it's about time we've got an awesome fatality like this. Flawless victory. Whew! That was quite the list to do. But hey, all Mortal Kombat 1's fatalities have been ranked from the worst to the best. Which of these was your absolute favorite, and which one of these disappointed you the most? Share your thoughts down below and let's have a fun discussion. Remember, mine is not the definitive list. This is just one take, and I would love to hear your takes below. I'm sorry for the delay on uploads lately. This month has been extremely busy for me personally. I just want to let you know creating content for you is something I really enjoy doing, and your kind words when I'm feeling down never fail to cheer me up. For real, you guys all mean so much to me and I can't thank you all enough. Next on the channel is all cameo fatalities ranked, which will actually be out fairly soon, so stay tuned for that. As I mentioned before, once Combat Pack 1 is completed, you can expect to see this list updated. And along with that, I'm planning on re-ranking some old lists with new opinions and editing styles. I feel like a lot of my old videos need some proper updates after two years. And also, be on the lookout for all fatalities ranked based on games. Consider this the first episode in that entry, so be on the lookout for more updates there. Again, thank you so much for your continuous support. You all are special, and I love you all. My name is Nick, and have an amazing rest of your day. Fight.